Now, what I love to give my chemistry two students is what I call the very hard equilibrium problems. I love giving them these problems because they freak out and they see these problems and they go, God, these are so hard, how would I ever solve it? And I tell them, at this point, have you figured out how you would approach the problem? And honestly, about half of them have figured it out at that point. But generally what they'll say is like, well, there's three things you always tell me to do. And so they do it. And the first thing they say is, well, I know KQ has to equal Q. So for this reaction, ammonium, protonating water to give us an H3 and H2O plus, I know an equilibrium K has to equal Q. The second thing you always tell me is, well, I need to know the expression for Q. So they write it out. So it's concentration of NH3, concentration of H3O plus, all over concentration of NH4 plus. I'm like, well, there's also one other thing you always tell me to write out, and that's my IC table. So they build their IC table. I've got NH4 plus, H2O, NH3, and H3O plus. And water is liquid, I don't need it for Q, so I'm just gonna erase that column. I know the change in ammonium is minus X, change in ammonia is X, and change in H3O plus is X. And I've given starting concentrations here, 0.2 molar for everything. And if I think about it, I know that the E row here is just the I row plus the C row. So I get 0.2 minus X, 0.2 plus X, 0.2 plus X. But I don't know the equilibrium values because in the case of this problem, it wants to know what the equilibrium concentration of NH3 is. So I need to find this square. Okay, students who do this and say, okay, what would you do next? And the next step is, well, I need this row, so odds are I'm gonna have to use the analytical row because I'm not given any equilibrium values. So I'm gonna plug in my expressions and what I get is 0 0.2 plus x, 0 0.2 plus x, all over 0 0.2 minus x. I say, okay, what makes this a hard problem then? You've set up 90% of the problem. I said, well, really what makes this hard is this algebra. So if I look at this problem, I'm gonna get Ka equals 0 0.04 plus 0.4x plus x squared all over 0.2 minus x. And if I rearrange, I get 0.2ka minus x times ka equals everything on top. And when I rearrange it, I get x squared plus 0.4 plus ka x plus or minus 0.2 times Ka. It's just a big quadratic equation I'm being asked to solve. That's it. That's what makes these hard problems. So when it comes to these types of problems, typically I don't give them exams. The reason I don't give them exams is that this is an easy hard problem and that it kind of works out. You can be given nightmare quadratic equations, but that's the thing. The setup is exactly the same for all these types of problems, whether they're easy equilibrium problems like Ka of an acid dissociating, or they're super hard problems like We've got concentrations of everything. We need to figure out which way it goes. The big thing is, it's always the three, same three components. KQ equals Q, your expression for Q, and your IC table with the values you know and the values you're being asked to find. Once you've got that, the only way to really make these problems hard is to give you a wealth of algebra to solve. But that's not really focusing on the chemistry. That's kind of losing the forest and the trees there. I can give you really hard algebra problems. But if you can get this far and set this up correctly, you understand the concepts. So this is what makes a very hard equilibrium problem a very hard equilibrium problem. Conceptually, nothing has changed. What makes it hard is just the amount of algebra that's involved. So if you've gotten to this video and you paused it and you were able to fill out this whole thing before I even built out this video, congratulations. You are 90% there to solving equilibrium problems. Everything else that follows is just algebra.